every year I like to showcase some of the best new Mac games to play on Steam. So this time I'm doing the same thing, but I'm pushing it up to 20 games instead of 10. Also, please note, this video is only aiming towards games released on Mac in 2019, nothing before, and every game on this list is 64-bit and is playable under macOS Catalina. Number 20, we have Subnautica Below Zero. Below Zero is a standalone expansion for Subnautica. It's created by Unknown Worlds, and they have brought us a new experience that plays much like the base game, but brings a new frozen world, known as Planet 4546B. New creatures are here, biomes, weapons, items, and an actual story. You have more of a purpose this time and have goals to achieve instead of just trying to survive in the world. It's an early access game though. You may experience texture issues and frame rate drops, so go into it at your own risk. Below Zero is best played on recent 15 inch MacBook Pros or an iMac. Number 19 is Dota Underlords. This is the best free game on Steam in 2019, in my opinion anyway. It's set in the universe of Dota and the battles take place on what I believe you could call a chessboard. Before a match begins, players must place down their chosen heroes and then let the battle commence and see who wins. In classic Valve fashion, they have been pushing out big updates. Recent additions include a new user interface, a duos and freestyle mode, new heroes for hire, and new alliances to form. Dota Underlords is playable on all Macs back to 2012. Number 18, we have Pine. Some people call Pine the PC version of Zelda Breath of the Wild. While it most likely takes inspiration from that game, Pine has a bigger focus on simulation, role-playing, and survival. You can even befriend creatures and they can assist you in battles. Or, if you want to be an annoyance, you can actually just attack them, steal their food, or take over their habitat. The combat and world need some more polish, but I still think it's a solid game. Pine is best played on recent 15-inch MacBook Pros or an iMac. Number 17 is Dirt 4. Earlier in 2019, Feral Interactive published 2017 Dirt 4 to macOS. It's not nearly as punishing as Dirt Rally, instead the game offers a more arcade tone. Not saying Dirt 4 isn't challenging, you will still have your wits tested, but the vehicle handling is considerably easier here. The game offers lots of modes to jump into, a new and improved damage system, you can play in online competitive matches, and will have access to heaps of iconic vehicles. Dirt 4 is playable on Max back to 2013, and will work on Max back to 2012, but with limited performance. It also officially supports eGPUs. Number 16, we have Tropico 6. Here we have the latest city builder in the series. This time, you can manage extensive archipelagos, build bridges, use a new research system, utilize new transportation and infrastructure, steal the wonders of the world, customize your palace, and give election speeches. There is a number of new features here to keep old fans happy and newcomers engaged for hours on end. The game had some bugs on older Macs when it first released, but this issue has been fixed. Tropico 6 is best played on 15-inch MacBook Pros, released since late 2013, or all iMacs released since late 2013. Number 15, we have We Were Here Together. Here is a wonderful co-op puzzle adventure for you folks. It takes place in the Antarctic wasteland, and your goal is to escape. The game requires both players to communicate via your Mac's microphone. 
This is a vital part of the gameplay in order to solve puzzles. So if you don't like talking on your microphone or you're shy, you might not have fun here. The player base is sadly quite small, so it's best to have a friend you can connect to directly, or you can join the game's Discord server and find a partner there. We Were Here Together is playable on Max back to 2011. Number 14, we have Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Ported to Mac in 2019, this is the only COD available on Mac right now. All the older games were 32-bit and Aspire Media decided to drop support. Visually, this game is still amazing and offers a great single-player campaign and a fun multiplayer and zombies mode. There are only two to 3,000 players online nowadays and it can go down below 1,000, so finding matches can take their sweet time. But it's a Call of Duty on Mac, and for me, I think it's still worth taking a look at, even if it's four years old. Black Ops 3 is supported on all 15-inch MacBook Pros released since mid-2015, all 21.5-inch Retina 4K IMAX released since 2017, and all 27-inch Retina 5K IMAX released since late 2014. Number 13 is Fantasy Strike. One genre was really limited or missing on Mac until 2019, and that was fighting games. Serland Games actually developed this game on Macs, which means it's incredibly well optimized for our platform. You can play in single player fights or play in online or local matches, and the matchmaking system is very fast. Tons of characters with unique abilities are here for you to use, and all have different backstories, which you can see in the cutscenes. Sure, it doesn't have the advanced graphics of Tekken, but I still enjoy its cartoony and vibrant graphics. Fantasy Strike is supported on Max back to 2014, but should work on Max back to 2012, but with limited performance. Number 12, we have Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. This game presents historic battles in a comedic way, using a physics-based simulation system to provide really stupid battles. Before you start battles, you can place down different silly units onto the map. Each unit has a different ability that can have an advantage or disadvantage for battles. You can play through the campaign, or play how you like in the sandbox mode. It's so much fun, and battles can be really hilarious and ridiculous. Right now, it's an early access game, and officially supports Max back to 2017, roughly, but you can actually play the game on Max back to 2012, but you may have limited performance. Number 11 is Project Rip. Project Rip reminds me of the good old days of COD Zombies, and the art style is reminiscent of new Doom games. It has a AAA graphics quality, but doesn't bring you a story. Instead, you go into arcade levels and have to survive against waves of enemies. As you play, you'll unlock up to 20 guns, a few maps, and perks in combat. Storming Tech will be adding more maps soon, and will be launching a standalone VR version, which will be playable on Mac. Project RIP should be playable on all 15-inch MacBook Pros released since mid-2015, all 21.5-inch Retina 4K IMAX released since 2017, and all 27-inch Retina 5K IMAX released since late 2014. Number 10, we have a short hike. Here you have an open world that is centered around flying and climbing. You can collect yellow feathers while you explore, and these will allow you to fly higher and climb for longer distances. There is also no violence in this game. It's very peaceful and relaxing. Despite being kind of short, it's still worth taking a look at, and it's a pretty cheap game. Plus, it's a highly underrated gem, 
Anyway, a short hike can run on most Macs out there from 2012 and onwards. Number 9 is Rise to Ruins. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition doesn't have a Mac version, but Rise to Ruins should make up for this loss. In fact, some of you might prefer this game. It's a godlike village simulator that has similar visual and gameplay elements from classic titles such as real-time strategy, tower defense, resource management, and survival games. All this makes for one of the best strategy games of this year. You can play in traditional, nightmare, peaceful, or sandbox mode, depending on your playstyle. Look, the game is still in its early days, and the creator Raymond Dua will be adding free content in the future. Rise to Ruins is playable on most Macs out there. Number 8, we have LEGO DC Supervillains. In July, Feral Interactive ported this new LEGO adventure to macOS. It's set in an open world, where you can create your own supervillain. Players can explore iconic locations from the DC universe, solve puzzles, overcome obstacles, and battle the good guys. It's one of the best looking games in this series so far, and has engaging gameplay and combat. It really focuses on custom characters too, so you can modify your character's looks, weapons, and personality. This is what you want from a LEGO game. LEGO DC Supervillains is supported on Max back to 2012. Number 7 is Children of Mortar. Children of Mortar is a wonderful action RPG game. The cool thing about this one is that you don't play as a single character. Instead, you can change to a different hero between the dungeon runs. Each character has different skills that you can use in battles, and it's up to you to choose the right hero for the right moment. There are many different approaches that you can take to battles, and that's one of the things that is loved about this title. It's always fun and offers a challenge that I believe is worth undertaking. Children of Mortar should run on most Macs out there. Number 6 we have Lonely Mountains Downhill. This is a really solid game and was worked on by a small team known as Megagon Industries. You can go into many levels and locations and will ride down mountains and try not to crash. The more you play, the more you unlock. It's an incredibly rewarding game. The camera movement can take a while to get used to and even the movement of the bike. So what I suggest is that you don't play with a mouse and keyboard instead with a controller. To add on, I noticed a few frame rate drops when playing, however it doesn't ruin the experience. Lonely Mountains Downhill is supported on Max back to 2012. Number 5 is Definity Original Sin 2. In January, Larion Studios and Elvarels ported this award-winning RPG to Mac. Its port was incredibly well done and came with Mac features. We have eGPU support, MacBook Touch Bar support, MacBook Trackpad and Selected Gestures support, Apple MiFi controller and Rumble support, and HDR. It's actually an amazing RPG game that has next-generation turn-based combat, four-player online and split-screen multiplayer, impressive dialogue, and 4K support if your Mac can handle that resolution. Definity Original Sin 2 is supported on a range of Macs, but it's worth seeing the full list of supported Macs on Steam. Number 4, we have Mutational. You may know this game is on Apple Arcade, but did you know it's also available for Mac on Steam? It's my favourite adventure game of 2019, with great character development, an engaging story, and amazing visual fidelity. It takes place on an island where, 100 years ago, a meteor hit the island, leaving most of the inhabitants dead. And for the ones who survived, they began to show strange mutations. You play as a 15-year-old in the modern world who travels to this tropical island to take care of her dying grandfather. It presents themes of family, death, a coming-of-age story, 
and the beauty of environment. Mutagenor is supported on all Macs back to 2012. Number three is Total War Three Kingdoms. I have to say, this is a gorgeous game and is one of the best, if not the best, strategy game I've played on a Mac ever. That's a big statement, I know, but I'm going with it. It's set during the conflicts of ancient China. You can choose from 12 legendary warlords, conquer the Middle Kingdom, and enjoy awesome turn-based tactics and massive real-time battles. To be honest, the battles are so, so, so gosh damn big and are really fun to witness and to just be a part of. It's like you're there. Feral Interactive have also been bringing us the expansions when they've come, so I'm very thankful for that. For a full list of supported Macs, see the supported Mac section on the Steam page. Number two, we have Katana Zero. Katana Zero is an incredibly fun and well-polished game. It is a neo-newer action platformer, which brings stunning visuals, great music, fast-paced gameplay, and offers a very deep story. The gameplay has you slashing, dashing, and controlling time to get past levels. Eskii Soft and Devolver Digital have brought out their first major update for the game. With a new speed run mode, and a hard mode, and new achievements. More free DLC is coming soon too. Katana Zero is playable on most Macs out there. Number one, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. On the 5th of November, Feral Interactive ported the last chapter in the new Tomb Raider series to Mac. This is the definitive edition too, which combines the base game, all seven DLC challenge tombs, and all downloadable weapons, outfits, and skills. In the concluding experience here, Lara goes to a bustling Mexican town of Kazumil and will attempt to save the world from the Mayo Apocalypse. Players will navigate underwater caverns, pass spectacular locations, explore tombs filled with traps, and engage in fantastic combat. If you're interested in the game, be sure to check out the full list of supported Macs on the game's Steam page. It also officially supports eGPUs and HDR. Before we go, here are some bonus upcoming macOS Steam games. Neko Barista is a 3D cinematic adventure game that gives a unique take on the visual anime novel medium. Feral Interactive have confirmed that adventure game Life is Strange 2 is still coming to macOS, but haven't given an ETA on the release date. Black Said Under the Skin is releasing on the 15th of November 19. The developer told me that it will be available for macOS on launch day. Hopefully this is the case though. What games do you play on Steam? Are any of them not playable anymore because of macOS Catalina? Leave a like if you found this video useful and subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted about upcoming videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.